So the heck off commie. Tell the folks what, what that is about, all about. That's just, that's me telling communists to go away. You know, the, the whole aesthetic of the show is this very uh, 1950s retro aesthetic, which I think calls back to the Red Scare and everything that was going on then, which I think we can see has been totally vindicated. I mean, the country is run by communists and the entire agenda of the world is moving towards global communism. So the name of the show basically seeks to shine a light on that uh, and let people know that, you know, that's what it's about. Though what tends to happen is people think because it is that sort of retro aesthetic and because it is talking about commies, they think it's a much more surface level brand of, of right wing content or conservative content that we make. But people who watch my show or who, or who are relatively familiar with my work will know that we do get pretty in depth with things in a way that a lot of people don't or aren't willing to do. Um, you are a Christian. True. And what does it mean to be a Christian? Uh, simply, I would say just to have faith in God. But I, th I think the faith is what people don't understand. People think faith means believing, but it doesn't. It's a different thing. And I always talk about the bridge as the, the analogy. So it's one thing to believe that a bridge exists, but to have faith in the bridge would be to walk across it and trust it to actually support you. And, and that's how I, I view Christianity. Yeah. Like if you're not actually willing to follow the Bible, belief in Jesus is in the abstract isn't going to be enough to save you uh, in the afterlife or on earth at all. You are, Christianity is being wiped out in America. It's like yes. fewer and fewer people are now admitting or saying that they are Christian. Why do you think there is an attack upon Christianity and no other religion? Well, because it's true. Uh, and that's the only thing that would actually serve as an impediment to what they're trying to do, which is fundamentally a satanic agenda, which, of course, is prophesized in the Bible. But, yeah, there's a reason why you were allowed to go and attack, you know, Islamic people, for example, in 2015. It was a very almost edgy talking points. And, you know, Republicans were allowed to feel like they were really fighting back if they said things like radical Islamic terrorism. Right. But you could never you could say that. Um, or if you're going to attack Christianity, that's fine. But you could never say anything positive about Christianity the way that you can also say positive things about Islam, or even the way that they'll talk about it, you know, radical Islamic terrorism, they would have to put the word radical in front of it, they would have to add terrorism, they couldn't just criticize Islam as fundamentally incompatible with Western civilization, which is rooted in Christianity, they had to only talk about the, the you know, terrorism that we were all seeing, but they could never get on television and say anything positive about Christianity. And if they do, it's this very vague, vague sort of televangelist understanding where Christianity just means that you have to be nice to people and be tolerant. They don't talk about the aspect of it that involves, you know, militancy or, or discipline or anything like that that would actually advocate more so for intolerance. The one thing I noticed about the attack on Christianity, when I was growing up, Christianity was the thing. It was America. It was no separate from the person and Christianity, no matter what color. Now they have narrowed it down to me, white supremacy, whatever that's supposed to mean. And they're doing all they can to wipe out white Christian straight males because they know that if they can wipe them out, it's over for Christianity. There would be nothing left but destruction in America. Am I seeing it wrong? Do you disagree or agree with that? I, I agree completely. And a lot of times people struggle to talk about how anti-white the overriding agenda is, but that's really what it is, plain and simple. And the motive for that is also pretty simple, which is just that if you wanted to completely restructure a society, you naturally would want to turn people against the people who have the deepest roots in preserving that society, which just so happened to be white Christian men. The same way if you wanted to overthrow China, you would try to turn people against the Han Chinese. Or if you wanted to overthrow Russia, uh, well, you might support a proxy war in Ukraine, or you might try to turn people against the native Russian population. So it's the same thing in America. It's just the people who have the deepest roots and therefore the greatest incentive in preserving the traditional American society are white Christian men who up until 10 years ago were all straight. <laughs> and so... You're out and about doing your thing and uh, with uh, uh, heck, heck off commie. Yes. And it's clear that Christian white men, men are under attack. Are you concerned about your life or, or are you concerned when you're out doing your protests and questioning people? Do you have to watch your back more now? How do you deal with all that? Yeah. 
I'm not too worried about it, to be honest. I actually would be honored if uh, I were, you know, targeted or something. I mean, God forbid my, my parents would be devastated, but I think that that would just be a sign of being effective above all else. And, you know, if that's the case, then I feel as though I've done everything that I could. Uh, I still have plans for the future, but I'm, I'm confident that I'm more or less operating on all uh, or firing on all cylinders right now. So I guess it's, it is something I have to think about, but if it happens, it happens. I do take precautions, but I don't fear it in the way that I think a lot of people are taught to fear death because again, the lack of Christianity, they don't believe that there's anything that's going to happen them in the, uh, to them in the afterlife. They view existence, not as something that was gifted to them by God, but as this thing that just was coincidental and therefore, or because they have this finite, meaningless life, they may as well pursue as many avenues of pleasure as possible. So I always call this the checklist. They will say, well, I want to go and see Yosemite, and I want to do drugs, and I want to go skydiving, all these very inconsequential things that they view life as, you know, the bucket list, things I want to do before I die. And if I can say that I've, you know, climbed Mount Everest, then I've lived a meaningful life. They have no concept of charity, no concept of piety, of anything like that. It's always like, well, what can I do to just have this this insignificant or significant amount of fun to please myself. It's a very dark way of viewing the world, I think. What is your, what is important to you? Um, creating a society or doing my best to cultivate the creation of one that allows for American families to work as little as possible and create the best life for their children, which they would create in male, female, AKA actual marriages. Why do you think we don't have more white men standing up, older or young? How old are you now? 22. Because when we first taught, you were a baby. I was. I was 19 <laughs> at the time, I believe. Yeah. Why do you think older white men and, your, uh, and, and of course, white men your age are not standing up in their own country? This country was founded by white men, white Christian men. The law of the land came about as a result of the Bible. And why do you think white men are not standing up? Young and old, we don't see a, a lot of them standing up and speaking out. I think it's because they don't view themselves as white men or even American men. They view themselves as like guys who just so happen to reside on this arbitrary geographic place that we call America. So yeah, they're really the first generation to be divorced from their ancestors, even their parents. I mean, they have no concept of the values upon which this country was founded and propagated. And so, you know, the best way for them to succeed and to pursue all of the things that they're taught to proceed, which is more or less just money, things of this earth, earth pleasures is to like cooperate with the system and not speak out against it. Because if you speak out against the system, you're not going to be rewarded. You're going to be persecuted. So they can live a quiet life. You know, maybe they disagree, but they'll just keep their head down in HR meetings where they're being taught that diversity is our greatest strength and that white men are to blame for all the faults in the world. They'll keep their head down. They'll get their paycheck and then they'll go home. They'll play video games. Maybe they'll work on their motorcycle or something, but they're not pursuing anything that's really greater than themselves. I mean, the average guy in his mid twenties who I I speak to doesn't go to church. He doesn't talk to women. He doesn't have a girlfriend. He's probably, you know, on dating apps like Tinder trying to cope with that, but <laughs> he really isn't pursuing anything that men of his father's or grandfather's generation would have regarded to be stepping stones in life. They've more or less just given up on these things and said that, well, as long as I have video games and marijuana, I'm okay. And so how did you come to be so solid? That's a, that's a really good question. My dad teases me about this from time to time. He, he says that, uh, what does he say? He's like, there's really no reason that you aren't like strung out on drugs playing video games, you know, all day. Like a lot of, unfortunately, my friends from high school have ended up being, but um, I don't know. I like to think that, that uh, I, I'm on a mission from God. I really do believe that I'm doing God's work. Um, so I would say that that's probably the most likely explanation because everything else, you know, where I grew up would suggest that this wasn't going to be the results, but here we are. The uh, country, in spite of the fighting that you and others are doing to stop it, is becoming a communist country anyway, it seems. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's possible to turn that around at this point? I think it's possible. I don't know if it's probable 
at some point, there's going to be some big event. I don't know if that's going to be a collapse, but there will be an inflection point where the incumbent regime isn't going to be able to maintain power because no coalition of people who are so divorced from reality and who are so degenerate could ever maintain power or remain in alignment with what it takes to maintain power over a country this big, a population this diverse, this divided. So eventually there's going to be, I think, an opportunity for authentic American patriots to do something. I don't know if it's going to be within my lifetime. Perhaps we'll balkanize, but I don't think that we're ever going to be completely without hope. I think that to be in a state of despair is almost as bad as being in a state of being with the enemy because there's always something you can do. And history, you know, has a lot of examples of people who against all odds and almost by coincidence, these opportunities just open for them and they capitalized on them and were able to achieve victory. So I think that we're actually in a pretty good position.